On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have word of red hot fluking on the South Shore Bays, nice bass being caught in Montauk, and Matthew Broderick has some great tips on using darter and bottle plugs. All of this and more at the new fisherman.com. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. Wind, much cooler temps, and a big heave on the ocean brought the fishing opportunities down to a minimum. However, for the anglers that did manage to find respite out of the wind, they were rewarded with some nice fluke catches. This is the final weekend for summer flounder, so let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin. All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, let's check the weekend forecast. I got some good news. Finally, a decent weekend coming up. We got some much better conditions than we've been seeing the past several weeks and uh, weekends, certainly. All right, water temps have cooled down quite a bit. No surprise there. A lot of 60s across the island. Uh, wave heights. Saturday looks okay. I mean, in general, two to four here, especially on the western side. The sound okay. Maybe on the east end, it's a little bumpier there, south of Montauk. And we stay with two to four throughout most of Saturday. It's going to be kind of a cloudy day, a little bit of a chop, but not bad. We start to bring the waves up a little bit Sunday. Uh, more of a four to eight roll beginning to come in off the southeast there. And, uh, you know, some of those waves will get a little bit uh, lumpier towards Sunday afternoon. So I think Saturday pick of the weekend and early Sunday should be good. You got some clouds, some rain to deal with. Southwest about 5 to 15, Saturday going southeast. So if you have some cover, just watch for that. Could be a little bit of rain, but nothing really heavy. And then, you know, Saturday afternoon's okay. The winds are still okay. It's Sunday. We start to get more of a south-southwest, about 10 to 20. And that can bump things up a little bit. High tides, morning uh, north shore, early morning on the south shore for Saturday. Let's quickly check the Guru and see what we got going on here. And notice on the, uh, the Guru, this is for Saturday right there. Uh, you know, the winds, again, generally south, southeast, you know, 515, maybe up to 20 late. And, you know, generally two to three on the ocean, so it's not going to be that rough. But uh, some rain, though, a little bit of raindrops, nothing too heavy. And there's your Sunday. Early morning looks good and then starts to bump up late in the day as those waves start to come up uh, past three to four feet. So overall, certainly a much improved weekend. This should be much better, much more comfortable for fishing. Enjoy, be safe. Kim, back to you. Remember, be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before heading out on the water. There's one more big change the weather brought us last week. With that, we have Fisherman Senior Editor, Fred Galfaro. Yeah, Tim, and uh, it's been a tough, tough go for the boats between uh, big seas from the hurricane offshore and also a lot of wind, stiff winds out of the northeast, out of the north. Uh, but the, the good news is that these winds are going to be laying down the next few days. I don't see anything more than really 10, 12 miles an hour. Uh, also the seas will be down to two, three feet. Should have excellent conditions for closing out the fluke season. This is the last weekend of fluke season, so get your last licks in now. Uh, it's yet to be seen what you know, what the status of as far as the tuna run, you know, that was really hot. Uh, nobody's really been able to get offshore, so we'll have to see how that pans out. Um, on the surf, uh, you know, we're expecting a little more action, I think, this past week with the forecast for northeast, but we actually had a lot of north winds as well as northeast. We had high pressure, which is not, not really good, not typical of a northeast wind. Um, so there wasn't a lot of action going on around the island. There was some uh, bass and blues picked in places like Riches and Shinnecock Inlets. What the cold nights did do, however, was uh, get all the mullet moving. Reports of mullet from one end of the island to the other. Lots of mullet, but unfortunately very few fish on them. Not a lot of fish around just yet. But there's been some really good fishing up in Rhode Island and also the Cape Cod Canal. So we should start seeing those fish dropping down very soon. So keep that in the back of your mind and uh, you know it's time. If you ever wanted to know when to use a darter or a bottle plug, Long Island Managing Editor Matthew Broderick has some insight on this topic. Go go over a couple plug bag tips going into the full run with you guys. Real commonly asked question while fishing in the surf on the, uh, the south shore, the north shore of Long Island is what's the main difference between fishing a bottle plug and a darter? A uh, couple main differences right away. Typically when I'm throwing something like a bottle plug, I'm using that in rougher water, heavier current. It just seems that the, the lip design on a bottle plug helps that plug stick in the current a lot better. Usually when I'm throwing a darter on the other hand, the current is a lot lighter, uh, slower, not as rough. 
Um, aside from fishing different currents with different plugs, the, the two plugs offer different actions and I've had different nights where one plug will outfish another plug just based on the action. So some nights they'll just want the daughter, which is more of a zigzag action. And the bottle plug on the other hand is more of a wiggle action. So try both out this full run, see which one works better for you and do experimenting and learn for yourself. We start off this week from Montauk with Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Thanks, Tim. Well, as everyone has figured out, this week was pretty terrible as far as the weather went. So there's not a ton of uh, fish report to uh, put forth this week. But, you know, there was some uh, bass on the beach on Saturday, but they were kind of out of casting range. Uh, we had some big pods of bass show up. Right in front of the lighthouse, uh, surf casters thought they were going to get a nice shot at it, but they were pretty, pretty much right out of range. Uh, fluking was totally shut down. Pretty much everything else was shut down this weekend. Um, finally today, we were able to get out in the afternoon when the weather finally laid down and the swells from Hurricane Teddy had subsided. Um, even though it wasn't the best evening out there in Montauk this week, we still put together a good trip. Uh, Mark and Steve, a couple regular customers that I've had all summer were out and we managed to put together some nice striped bass on the fly before the sunset today. Like I mentioned last week, I'm going to be uh, pushing the new Rio products flies. Uh, this week, the fly of the week is not the nice glass fly. Um, this has been really effective for false albacore, striped bass, and bluefish. Um, if you're looking to get a uh, epoxy type fly for the false albacore season, this would be a really good choice. Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle of Northport was also in Montauk. Hey guys, I thought I'd take a break here from uh, doing some of our custom boga orders. In case you don't know, we uh, I think we're the only shop in the United States that uh, does customizing. We put in fluorescent numbers, we clean bogas, we do a lot of custom grips for guys, and uh, we match our Amazon prices. So you get a, a huge offer. It's good stuff and it's a, a, a must if you're surf casting or if you're on the boat dealing with some of these larger fish. It's a great way to weigh them and uh, safely uh, catch and release. As far as the reports go, it's if you remember last week I told you that we've got this big heave coming up and uh, if you weren't uh, close enough to getting out there that Wednesday, Thursday, um, you missed out because we had some beautiful fish that snuck out east. I had gotten into those rips and uh, worked those fish coming out of the Block Island area and really just had a great time catching and releasing them. Um, as far as local goes, all the way from Cold Spring Harbor over here to Stony Brook, it's rough. I mean, uh, the winds have been unrelenting and, uh, you know, the local charter boat and uh, party boat over in Huntington's been going out. They're doing a great job jigging up fish, uh, doing the, the boga. Um, the porgies and sea bass but if you're having trouble getting out you know you got a small boat it's been pretty tough most of the people have been in the back bays it's been a surf cast is paradise always remember if you're fishing these big heaves don't go out to the water too much it's not the water that hits you from the front that gets you it's the one that sneaks behind you knocks out your back legs and gives you a good tumble so you really want to practice some uh, safe stuff here uh, as far as this week coming up it looks like uh, we're gonna get a break in the wind that's gonna be a great thing I'm waiting for the water clarity to really um, improve because right now it's very muddy it's muddy all over with all of this turbulence here in the sound you got a lot of muddy water I'm still looking for uh, false albacore this blow in the, the unclean waters really is not allowing them to come in I really uh, think that as stuff settles and we're coming off this new moon a week later you're gonna see fishing pick up so get out there uh, keep keep pounding the uh, the beach keep working your boat and uh, good things are going to happen. We've got blackfish season coming up. We're going to be stocking up uh, crabs. We're uh, working really hard for the Asian crabs. We've got green crabs coming in, lots of jigs and stuff. So um, where everybody's preparing for blackfish season and there's a lot of excitement, I, I think that uh, it's going to be a fantastic season. So until uh, I see you next time, get out there, practice some good uh, fishing conservation, keep what you're allowed, follow the regulations. I bid you peace, tight lines. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. Well, I'm glad these uh, crazy northeast winds are behind us. Uh, weekend was a little disappointing. 
either you know getting to a spot that was somewhat calm and being able to cast into it, having 20 mile an hour wind in your face. Um, nothing off of the beach really to, to report on. I have heard of some smaller bass taken, uh, you know, a little bit close to Mauritius, West Hampton, Cupsog area, some fish down there. Um, now that the wind is through and it's calmer, got out tonight at sunset, got about four bass. One was a slot uh, fish, didn't keep any of them, uh, you know, did the catch and release which hopefully many other people are doing, um, but but really nice to get to get a couple. Um, so there's a ton of peanut bunker in the bay. That some of that should also be in the ocean. I would expect things to start to heat up off the beach any day now. Uh, fluke, sea bass, tuna, really no report the past week with the conditions uh, that we've had. So uh, the albies have been going in and out of Shinnecock and Mariches. Uh, not that peak full run, you know, thick alby kind of season, but, you know, they are there. It's just putting the amount of time in and being there, you know, right spot at the right time. So uh, this weekend should be plenty of opportunity for some fishing. So enjoy it and uh, let's get at it. It's fall run time. Back to you, Tim. Bergen Bay Docks is holding their annual Fall Stripe Bass Tournament on October 10th and 11th. They'll also be holding their third annual Mako and Thresher Tournament on October 10th. For all the details, visit BergenBayDocks.com. Now let's check in with the Fire Island and Great South Bay Area Report with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Tim, Fire Island Report. Looks like fishing really picked up. There's been a good catch of fluke and weak fish mixed from the bridge, Robert Moses Bridge, and east. Uh, down towards the lighthouse so I would focus my attention there it looks like a decent weekend weather wise uh, also for offshore Saturday looks great very calm seas and I'm sure those tuna fish are there nobody's really gotten out this past week due to the, all of the heavy weather from those storms a lot of heavy waves and heavy surf so uh, I think it's going to be a good weekend to fish and like I said weather looks good and the fishing is good also so uh, Blow fishing still great, lots of snappers around. Uh, mixed bag now, September, you can catch all different kinds of fish. So uh, get out there, have fun. Talk to you next week, Tim. From Seaford, we have Roger Boodoo. Hey, Tim. Hey, anglers. How's it going? Um, unfortunately, we really don't have much to report this week. It's been very slow. Uh, I fished the back bays a few times by the bridges and um, haven't really gotten too many uh, bites aside for some sea bass. And, um, you know, a couple of striped bass hits here and there, but it's really hard to hook up with them. They're just really not expressing too much interest, uh, at least the ones that are here in Jones Bay and, uh, you know, by the Meadowbrook and the Wantor Bridges. Um, the, the fluke bite, it, it really hasn't been there in the bays. You know, I've talked to a lot of guys who are fishing in the area and they're just not picking up any fluke inside. And I'm sure that the storm that just passed through had a lot to do with that, churning up all the the water but um you know now that it's going to flatten out a little bit and hopefully the weather holds up over the next couple of days and into next week maybe we could get out and um see if there's uh you know any action going on by the reefs um you know as we're moving uh closer into um striped bass season and um with the blackfish they're going to be starting to come in by the bridges so uh, that'll be uh, most of the action that we're looking forward to as far as fluke uh, i think we only got like one or two more days left and then fluke is done but um you know guys get out there uh give it a give it a shot i mean listen a bad day fishing is uh better than a good day at work so get out there give it your best shot and uh that's what we got to report for this week tim back to you joe ben savenger fished the wantor bridge earlier in the week and reported that the bluefish provided non-stop action all night long now from oceanside we have captain joey leggio Hey Tim, what's going on, bud? How are you today? Okay, fall is here. Look at that. That was a pretty quick summer. But anyhow, on to the reports. The uh, had a lot of wind this week, so I was able to get out on a couple small little trips. I did one trip with Raf and Steve and their buddy, shot over to the bridge, and uh, we caught some bass, some blues. We had some beautiful porgies, uh, actually really fat porgies too. Some of them, you know, going over two pounds, which is really nice. Uh, hit the back bays. Uh, there's life in the back bays now. The bluefish are there. We had stripers. Um, yeah, basically bluefish and stripers in the back bays. Uh, bait's still around. Tons of spearing in the bays. And uh, the peanut bunker still all over the place, which is good. And then uh, the following day, my buddy came by. and Just not, not thinking it would be anything there. So let me just try to dock again. And this is way back in the bay now. Way, way back to where I live by my house. 
and we pulled 12 fluke out from over by my dock. Still other hits too that we're missing. Granted, all the fish were very small, but it was pretty cool to still see those fluke there in the bay. I thought for sure they would have been gone by now making their migration, you know. But again, the bay the bay is loaded with bait, so I mean, anything can happen. It's There's plenty of life there. I'm sure any of the structure right now is gonna be holding, you know, the early season uh, blackfish are starting to come in, so once that season opens, I'm sure all those little structures are gonna have all the blackfish. The stripers are there already. So, you know, get out there at nighttime with your clam chum, your bucktails, whatever, whatever it may be. Fish those docks, any structure, just look for that structure. And especially if you see any lights, definitely fish under those lights. I took my son Frankie out with his buddy Benjamin, took the kids to the back bay. Again, another very, very windy day, but I was able to sneak him into the back bay. The kids had fun. They caught uh, seven bluefish, all on light spinning gear. The casting was a little impossible due to the wind. So I just let them hold the rods and we trolled around the back bay areas for those bluefish. So again, there's so much bait back there. The action's there and get those kids fishing, man. They're in school, some are homeschooling. But get them out there on those weekends and just show them the outdoors. It's really a great thing. And uh, other than that, that's my report and I'll talk to you later, Tim. Thank you. Bye-bye. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Tim. Well, I'm up here again, uh, beautiful Farmington. I'm, I, I came up here right I came up here to take a class because I want to learn as much as I can about fly fishing. I'm taking a class on my two-handed rod right here. I'm having a great time. I will tell you, the fishing is tough. The whole Northeast really needs water. Even the streams on Long Island really need water. But they were fish caught. So get out when you can. Uh, as far as the saltwater goes, Duck Dennis, he's been going up to uh, fishing right around the Coast Guard Station in Jones Beach area. He caught albacore, he's caught bluefish, he's seen uh, stripers, so we're just starting. There's so much bait in the back bays. This is the time to get out there and listen, try something new. Get off the couch, get out there fishing, try two-handed, try tenkara, try saltwater, try anything new. It's, it makes it exciting. And so next week, tight lines, everybody. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Hey, thanks Tim. What's going on guys? So this last week I did a good combination of fresh water and salt water. Um, referencing my report from last week, those white perch in the tunnel, they had moved out towards the front of the pond where the salt water and the fresh water meet, and they were actually attacking spearing. It was very cool to see. So we capitalized on that, caught them, and a few largemouth as well. Moving forward, I took my gulp paddle shads into the dock lights again, uh, messed around, caught a nice fluke, had a nice, uh, excuse me, bluefish, and a bunch of other action. There was a lot of needlefish around. It was very cool. Moving forward again. Just the other night, I went back to those lights with some Kytex and I bounced them around because there was a big bluefish moving in. Note that. I saw them bouncing around the lights and I would throw the Kytex in and they would turn on them and just bang, hit them like a train. It's very fun, light tackle stuff, easy fishing. Um, other than that, I'm going to go back out tonight and see what goes on. Take care, guys. With our offshore report, let's check in with Captain Tony Gatto. Thanks, Tim. With one fishable day last week, reports are few and far between. From some of the guys that did make it out Thursday, which was the only day, the Ranger area was kind of shut down. The Columbia did produce fall salvies and some bluefin tuna. Here is Robert Shimborski with some pre boiled bluefin that they were able to chunk up. The Bacardi and Wes did have yellows, mostly on the chunk with sardines and peanut bunker. Don't be discouraged, there's plenty of time left this season. A lot of fish will be migrating through from the Cape. Bring along some chum and shark rigs and switch over late morning to shark fishing. It may actually save your day. Back to you, Tim. The weather put a damper on kayak fishing, so the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest leaderboard is unchanged. But I don't think that will stand. This weekend, I think the Yakers will be out in full force, and the deck will be shuffled. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, a tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Kayak Clash Contest and win this Old Town Autopilot kayak worth over 4000 bucks. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. And please support our correspondents by visiting their website and social media pages.
This is the last week of the fluke season, and the weather will be cooperating. And it'll be interesting to see if the tuna bite has been affected by the offshore storms and north wind. So check back next week, and we'll have all the details right here at the all-new Fisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.